actually have our old breathing, breathing grave. grave out of storage. It wasn't really in storage. It was sitting outside like the rest of our stuff. But <laughs> we are going to use the, the foam parts for it. I'm going to probably just modify them and make them look more rickety. This is one of those uh, cradle type, you know, crib setup. This one's falling into the ground or the, the, the rock and stuff is coming up because the guy under there is still alive and he's ringing the bell and no one's coming. And so he's maybe pushing, doing something. So it, we thought this thing tells a story. There's a little lean to the tombstone. So the whole thing comes apart in three pieces. The tombstone bolts from underneath. It's got the threaded inserts inside. I framed the whole thing in three-quarter plywood and then uh, glued some foam to it, sculpted it, hard-coated it with fiberglass after I covered it with the tin foil to protect the foam and uh, spray textured it with the mortar. Um, like I said before, there's, we're gonna drill a hole and have a pipe in the position we need it to be for the string to, to pull the bell. And then it will go through probably like a pulley and then connect to a motor or a servo or something like that. This comes out. It's got four inches of space in here and we can, you know, adjust it or customize it if we need to. But all the mech stuff will go right here. I still have to drill a hole for the cord. Um, but yeah, it's three pieces. Um, a lot of these holes in the fiberglass will get fixed with the mortar when I spray it on there, we'll just smear some on there. So that's why you don't have to get too perfect with the hard coating. So when Gina and I first were making this, we, at first we were gonna make one of those wood posts that you see in the patent drawings where the bell is in some kind of contraption, either in the center or off to the side. But then we were like, you know, I don't, it's like, why not just incorporate into the bell? I don't even think there was very many of these actually in use, I would think, but, we had to kind of go with our imagination. So we had this blank space where the epitaph should have went. We were like, hey, why not like create something? So we just cut a shield shape and then I mounted the belt to the outside of it. And we didn't think that looked very good to see the screws and stuff. So we countersunk it in there, covered with bondo. We're gonna add some texture to that. I routed some uh, plywood or some MDF and we created some decorative stuff and then these uh, decorative pieces up here just like on the monuments and the Ghostbuster house and stuff we have leftover resin like rosettes and uh, what else yeah yeah that we uh, we were on a Lancome job back in the day and I just took a bunch of them that were getting thrown away and we're still using those and so we just primed everything and textured that I think it adds a little uh, 
A little fun detail. Yeah, it breaks up the stone. Yeah. It's how we get stuff done. We for them to get passed out, and then we work time. He's had a hard day running around the Winchester house. Working. That's a good sign. We could have made this a little fancier if we had a little more time, but Gina said let's do the fishing line because you can not see it as, as good <laughs> at night. So to work on it, what you do is I just unhook it like that and then I tip this up. Okay, and you guys haven't seen this, but I just have a Pika Volt connected to a, like a servo and then a pulley right there. If I need to work on it, I just use that push stick to, to push the, the bell through the, the pipe up there and then I feed it through. Real simple. Left the instructions in there for someone so that they can have fun reprogramming it if they want. Look at how much overkill that pulley is. <laughs> Stainless steel, baby. <laughs> Heavy duty. I know most people probably do it through the back of this thing, so it's more haunted. But yes. I think. Uh oh. What? It's stretched out. Still working. Still working.